Hi Daphna, my name is Dee Arison and we are at my home in Schwanksville, Pennsylvania, which is a suburb of Philadelphia, but we're technically about halfway between Philadelphia and Allentown. I am, a, I call myself a team builder, a coach, and a facilitator of courageous conversations. I work with people, with groups of people, teams, organizations, even individuals who are uh, looking to have a greater impact, to really look at the way that they're impacting the world and learn to um, be more authentic, more true to themselves, and, um, and in doing so, true to their purpose and how they can impact their community and their, you know, their organization, whatever it is that's important to them. We had a woman that I know um, from the church that I go to who was organizing a program of how, you know, finding out who's out there in the world and what time do you have to give, what talents do you have, and how do you, how do you want to apply them. We call it, she was calling it the time and talent um, recruitment. It's, a, it's an outreach program that helps the people in our community who are struggling. Um, oftentimes they're lower income or there's some health issue in the family. Um, they've you know, a health issue and a, a father can no longer work and, you know, months go by and they can't pay bills and then they lose a home. I mean, it's, you know, it varies, but there's just um, a lot of different needs in the community. But the main need that this outreach program provides is a food pantry. So basically, it's an immediate, we've got, we can't feed our family this week, give us, you know, the Band-Aid solution. So we are, you know, we're here to provide that. We're here to help people who have immediate needs. But when we had this opportunity, when we had 50 or 60 people that were saying, I want to get involved, and, you know, frankly, the work that this outreach program was doing really couldn't support 50 more people to give out, you know, food to these 20 or so families that um, we help on a regular basis. So we looked at it as an opportunity to really figure out, all right, we've got this pool of people that want to get involved. What else is the community calling for? Um, what, what's needed now? In my work as a facilitator, I bring groups of people together, typically in organizations, to sit down and create positive change in their organizations. So I took the models that we use in my work, that I use in my work, and thought, well, heck, let's apply this to this community problem. The philosophy that we use is all based on story. We believe that's how cultures are, are made. It's the stories we tell to one another, you know. Um, so if, we're, if we want to create a culture that says, this is how we are in Schwanksville, well, let's start with the stories of how are we? Where have we been? What have we done? And what do we love about doing it? So all the stories were shared and then we had them talk about some of the themes they heard and we, we, wanted, we created a mural and the mural had two parts to it. The first part was who are we at our best? So what are all the things that we're bringing? Um, all those gifts and, and the love, the passion, what is it, why did we check the box? Um, that was one half of the mural. The other half was what are our three wishes for the future? Um, so we have that now as sort of a, a little bit of a framework to guide the next couple of steps of where we want to go. One of my passions is sustainable agriculture. The things that I had always tucked away in the back of my mind was we need a community garden in our town, at least one, many of them, you know, because we have all these people who we're providing food through a food pantry to, and they're mostly here to get food because of health problems, and yet the food they're getting is not in any way contributing to good health. Um, so it feels very conflicting for me. In the meeting, other people talked about it, and so we, you know, of course we started brainstorming, and where would it be? And we have land available at this church, and I know I'm on a board for the township here too, and I know they have some land available. So we started going down that whole road, and then, you know, I asked the question, so if we build it, will they come? We don't know. We have no idea if any of these families in, that would need ultimately access to fresh food have any time to come and tend the garden or any interest in tending a garden. Or, um, so really our, our next step had to be figuring out still, like I said initially, what is the community calling for? And before we go off and start building things that you know I'm passionate about or she's passionate about, we have to make sure that it's a co-creation that the people who are going to use the services are involved in the creation of it and invested in it and enthusiastic about it. There's no one here to fix other people or a community. We're all in this together. So, but, but so when I encounter that, when I encounter things that really aren't what I know they could be, you know, situations where people in um, on a township border are fighting over something really silly and it's impacting 
much bigger than them or, or wherever it is instead of just being like oh I'm gonna wait till they're done I can't wait to get out of here you know it's like this is what it is so let's you know let's talk about it um, so I feel like you know that's also how communities change but really it's me changing Where before I was focusing on what problems can we solve now I'm focusing on what possibilities can we create I mean and that comes right out of you know some of the training I've had so I didn't just you know make up that saying but but really that's what it is I'm not looking at what problems we're here to solve but what possibilities we can create it doesn't mean that we're ignoring problems they're still there but if it's like you you create more of what you're focusing on you know um, I got a car a couple years ago a Buick Rendezvous that I had never even heard of before but there it was on the lot my old car the engine died needed it got it all of a sudden they were everywhere on the road. My kids are going, there's our car, there's our car. It's like, once you're aware of something, you start to see it everywhere. So what do we want to be aware of? You know, do I want to be aware of the fact that we're all operating in silos or we have a high turnover rate? Or do I want to be aware of, well, when are there times of really great collaboration happening in this organization across silos? And let's analyze those to figure out what more is possible instead of let's analyze why they're silos and how can we fix the problem so it's it's, it's subtle it's just a flip of the way you look at things and that's really where I, I the journey that I went on these last couple years to s stop thinking that I could fix a problem and start realizing that I am here with you all whoever you all is at the moment to uncover possibilities and potentials and then figure out how we're going to create it Well, the why it's important to be involved, I think, is a shorter answer um, because, like I discovered, it's not going to just happen by me sitting here waiting for it to happen and saying, oh, the veil, you know, when are they going to do whatever we need done? Like, who's they, you know? So the they is the we, right? So that, I think it's important to get involved because, you know, we need, we need people who want to make a difference and want to drive the positive change because you can't leave it to a few and one thing I've seen over and over, especially working in a volunteer organization, it's the same people volunteering for everything and they burn out and they, you know, so, you know, we need those emerging leaders, those concerned citizens. Well, to me, community really boils down to relationships. So it's people and it's me with people, how we're, how I feel, how I'm relating. Um, what I'm learning from them, what we're doing together. It's just really about relationships. Um, you know, and, and I, I say this a lot to my clients in my work, you know, we're here to work on the team, the quote team, but who's the team? It's us, it's people. It's just a group of individuals sitting here, you know? So we're all, we're all here with all of our humanness and, um, and that's what we got to work with, you know? It's not, we're not waiting for permission by some authority or whatever it is we're here and we are the community so it's about relationships it's about people and it's about how I feel when I'm there the root of this is we want to help people get needs met and we also want to create more community you know greater sense of community um, and for people to feel more connected I know a lot of people that I personally have delivered food to or delivered Christmas packages to we do you know the whole you know we do very many gift drives and different things um, they feel so alone you know they um, are always so grateful like you know can't believe someone's coming to deliver packages to them or whatever um, so part of the goal in doing this is to um, change the way people feel about what it means to be a member of this community